This is an example of function calls in the single cycle computer. I'm going to run the FPG application and open the call return VigiLab application file. This will take a few moments to load and request your username and password for VigiLogic SOC in the cloud. The FPGA or SOC now configures and the various tabs will open for the call and return instruction examples and the IDE integrated development environment. And if you look down at the bottom, you'll see that the tab sometimes opens quietly. So click on it. And there are a number of tabs to do with call and return and some others as well, stack pointer, etc. that I look at. So in the IDE, open up in the individual instructions folder, the program call return. The main part of this program calls two functions because this is about calls and returns. Calls function zero and function one. Function zero simply inverts register zero and puts the result in register zero and then returns. Then it calls function one and function one inverts register one and in turn calls a nested function call function two, which inverts register two, returns to function one and returns to the main. I compile or assemble the code, transfer to program memory. These are the instructions, program counter from zero to nine and the various instructions here. Registers, special function registers and data and stack, which will be relevant for this example. The first instruction is a call instruction. The opcode for the call instruction is just four bits, one zero 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 and a 12 bit instruction, which is a address, the current address zero. So the value here is three. So it will call instruction three. That's the address of the function zero first instruction. There are no operands being fetched. There are no rights to register Rs or special function registers. But within the special function register, there is special function register three, the lower 12 bits of which is the stack pointer. And the stack pointer is connected through to the data and stack memory controller. And this opcode is decoded by the instruction decoder where signals mem write, load call address and increment stack pointer are asserted. Mem write inside the data and stack controller asserts data stack write signal because the current instruction address, which is zero zero, should be written into the stack so that it can be recalled once function zero finishes on the return instruction RET. The data that's to be written in is the current program counter. And you can see with the purple line here, the program counter is being sent across, but one is being added to that. So it's a program counter plus one because when the function call is completed, we don't want to come back and repeat instruction zero, we want to go to instruction one. So it saves the PC plus one as the data, zero, 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 one into the stack. The right is also asserted and the address is the current address of the stack pointer. And then within the special function register, there is a counter which is incremented to increment the stack pointer to one. So I'm going to browse to the data and stack controller. The functions which are used at the moment are the stack address, the stack data, and the write. The write, as I said, is the memory write signal asserted by the instruction decoder, asserts data stack write. The data is the value one, which was selected through the paths which are highlighted with the star, where the program counter is taken in, incremented, and provides the value one to the data and stack memory. And the address is the address which passes through to here, which is address zero. This is the active path, and this is the stack address. Current stack address is sent into the data and stack memory. Even though there is a, an active data path here, this particular value does not get through. This is the overriding data path selector here. I'm also going to look at the program counter control unit. This is the current PC value, program counter value, and it is to go to address three next. And you can see that address three is set up to be registered as the next program counter value. And the active data path here is the one closest to the register. This, this is taking the value three from the instruction bits 11 to zero. And because load call address is asserted by the instruction decoder, this is the value that is pushed in and registered. I'm going to restart the program. 
to go back to where I was viewing the call instruction. And I'm also going to look at the data and stack controller and the stack pointer. The stack pointer is a counter which has a stack pointer value. It's a 12 bit value. It's currently zero. It can be incremented or decremented or it can be loaded or there's various other behaviors that will be dealt with in other instructions. But basically it's a 16 bit counter. Bits 15 to 12 are not used. So it's really a 12 bit counter. And the current data path is the one through here, which increments the stack pointer on the next clock active step. So the stack pointer will increment to one. Currently the stack pointer is zero. So when I execute this instruction, the stack pointer will go to one and the address of the current instruction plus one will be pushed in to the stack. So I'm going to step the instruction and now the stack pointer has incremented. This is S of R0123. There's a bit of an issue with updating this window on instruction execution, which uh, we're fixing. So this should have changed from 0000 to 0001, the next instruction after the function has completed. So now there is an invert and a return. So I'm just going to single step on the invert because another video explains the logical operations. Now it's the return instruction. And in this particular case, the instruction decoder asserts decrement stack pointer and the return signals. So the stack pointer is currently at one and inside the data and stack controller, stack minus one, which is this value here. You see it has updated just a little bit later than we expected. Stack minus one, stack is here. So it's reading the, the data from this address, which is one. And you can see that coming out of the, the stack and into the program counter control unit. There's no write to the stack now, but there is a decrement stack pointer and that decrement stack pointer goes into the special function register and this counter will decrement to one on the next clock edge. The return instruction has an opcode, but much of the instruction is not used. And inside the program con counter control unit, return selects the data stack out and pushes that into the program counter to bring the value back to one to execute the call function one. I can look inside the program counter control unit to see where that happens. The return signal, which is here, selects the data and stack out through here and then through these paths to make that work. Going into the right back, I can look at the stack pointer. In this particular case, the stack is currently one, now selecting that minus one through to the next state. So it's decrementing the stack back to zero here once the value is taken out and put into the program counter to make the program run at instruction one. Let me step again and you'll see now that the program counter goes back to instruction one. The stack has returned to here and even though there's data in the stack, it's irrelevant data because it has been placed in and returned and effectively it won't be used or shouldn't be used again will be overwritten with the next stack access. Now it's calling function one and the address of function one is five. And here is the instruction five. So the assembler recognized where function one is placed in memory and then takes the address and puts it into the instruction along with its opcode. In this case, there's a memory write as before. In this case, the address because we've gone back to zero again, it's stack address zero, comes from SFR three. And the data value is the current program counter. So it's going to store that plus one. So it's going to go back to program counter two when the RET instruction is executed. And the program counter is going to go from one to five, that being in the instruction, bits 11 to zero. If I go to the data and stack controller, it's the same as before, the stack pointer, which is currently zero, is being selected through here as the address. The program counter here plus one is being selected through these multiplexers as the next instruction once the function has completed on RET from the function return. And the write is asserted as before. And the stack currently zero will increment to one. So I'll step. It has now started the function. Invert is covered in different demos. But now there's a nested call, so it's going to call another function, the function two at address eight. 
you can see that this address is in the instruction and here's the call opcode. In this case now, the program counter is six. That program counter is stored plus one seven in the stack and this will be written to stack address one and we'll keep what's in stack address here because we've nested function calls and the right signal is asserted as before. If I go to the data stack controller, the stack pointer is currently one through here as the address. The program counter plus one is the address to be stored for the RET instruction to return to and the right is here. Back to the stack pointer and once again the stack one will be incremented to two. Step the function. This should have updated but there's a little bug in this window so that will be fixed. Invert, I'll just step over, execute that and the return now takes stack which is pointing to this address, decrements one from it so it points to here as the address. The value seven is output from the stack, it's pushed into the program counter control unit which is currently at nine but it will go to seven on the next instruction because the signal RET in the instruction decoder has been inserted. And decrement stack pointer is asserted, so the stack pointer will decrement to one. So I'll step again, and now I'm back to the last instruction after the call the function to in function one. And now the stack pointer is at one again. This banner should have gone back to one, and decrementing to zero to take out the value two out of the stack to put it in the program card control unit to return to here, which is the instruction after the call function one, which actually is the end instruction. And again, the stack pointer decrements and it will, it'll decrement to zero. Step again. And now the program counter is two and this is the final instruction and the end instruction is here. The end instruction shows that the program counter is maintained no matter, no matter how many cycles are executed and there's no register writes, there's no data stack or operand fetch activity at all. The only signal that's asserted by the instruction decoder is end program. That's the end of the demo.